All right, so we got that group done, I think. Canadian Bridge, a couple of LCSs. Um, I think I want more container vessels. New Panamax, 15 meters. Can we get one of these through here? 13. Yeah, it's awfully close, but probably could just squeak. I don't. I don't actually know if ships get grounded. I've never actually, uh, honestly, never even attempted it. But I'm gonna just kind of, you know, at least try and be somewhat accurate with that. And... Yeah, I should be able to get a new Panamax through there. Oh, before I forget, I do want to apologize for anybody who watched last week's stream and uh, the stream just cutting out. Um, for those that might have missed it, we had uh, quite a storm come through my area last week and uh, lost power there for a little bit. Eh, large range, that should work. So let's see, a tanker... This group of tankers and container vessel. Time that group up just a little bit. Um. And let's see. Large range. Eh. I know I have a lot of these already. I'm just trying to be a little random about all this. Hmm. Find when I uh, kind of do this stuff on my own, I'm a little too uh, methodical about it. And that I like, you know. Nice, you know, neat groups. When in reality, I don't think this would it would be like that. So let's do a couple of small feeder vessels. This having a uh, a Burke and a Daring in it. We'll say this is probably a uh, a larger group of ships kind of leaving the uh, the area. Um, small feeder, the one I just used, yeah. Ultra large. Surprisingly, only a depth of draft of 15.5 meters. Those Panamax. Eleven and a half Panamax. Yeah, feeder max. Like I said, I'm sure all these feeder max and Panamax and new Panamax mean something, but and let's add one more ship just to. Mix this group up. Um, let's do, I haven't really used LNG, too many other LNGs, so say this is a couple of LNGs and another small feeder in it. So pretty large group kind of coming out of the Baltic under this group's uh, watch. And this one, let's move. Or this direction. So general purpose tanker. Level 
tankers there. I think we've already, nope, missed this group. Um, the LCS out front. Special container vessel. Now, one thing I'm a little worried about is I'm a little worried about the pathfinding of units through here. So I am going to have to keep these groupings really quite uh, close. I have had issues, uh, for instance, in one of the scenarios I was working on of uh, units trying to pass through the Strait of Gibraltar and uh, full task force kind of coming through and not being able to make it. I had units kind of hugging the coastline trying to find the... Uh, the right passage through. Still, uh, just like zooming in on, uh, and seeing all the, the map I or the names on everything, all the labels. All right, so small container vessels. And like I said, I haven't really used too many LPGs, so it's a couple more of those. And commercial tanker. Got that. that group up a little bit. Hit save, just to be safe. I have to say I haven't experienced any crashes so far with, uh, with these version 1.09 release candidates, but you never know. All right, so out here, I have a Bunker Hill, so a Tycho and a Burke. You know what, maybe I want to do this group. Um, more roll on, roll off vessels. Got that. That group's going up around Scotland. That's yeah, starting to come together pretty well, I think. Just going to check chats real quick. All right. So a couple more groups to go, and then I'll get started on uh, on import work, which will be taking a lot of these groups and just making imports out of them. I wonder what my uh, unit count is right now, but it won't run the unit. AU or update AU until uh, time has progressed. Um. All right. Have I missed any other type of ship that I? Small feeder. Pretty sure I decided not to do an ultra large. Wonder what an Atlantic conveyor is. 
That's interesting. It's got a, uh, was that a Harrier? Up trying to land on that in that photo. It's kind of interesting. See some helicopters parked over here. Look like Chinooks, maybe? Eh, pretty interesting ship. Um... Oh, just taking a look, seeing if there's anything else I might have missed. I think I want more tankers. Let's see. 12 meters, so what is that? That is a large range. Large range 1, large range 2. 16 meter depth, 12 meter depth, medium range, 10 meters. All right. Um, no, maybe, actually. Not sure why I just deleted those, but... Um, commercial container vessel... All right, so I got that group done. Oh, thanks, Dennis. The, apparently, that photo we were just looking at was actually uh, apparently taken from the Falklands War. Those are the SL sevens. Um. Commercial tankers, uh, row rows, more roll on roll off ships. I think what I want. This group here, Bainbridge, let's just do um, a couple of LNGs. And some some tankers. All right. Well, that looks like it's going to finish those up. Save it again. Oh, actually making pretty good time. Been running for about an hour now, and I've actually made more progress than I thought I was going to. Normally, I get bogged down to minutia. That's my biggest problem with with scenario design is I just get get really really bogged down in minutia stuff that in the end really isn't gonna really matter unless you're anal retentive like I am. And I have actually decided, speaking of uh, kind of getting off subject even more, I think I'm going to redo the air order of battle for the two sides just a little bit. I'm probably going to uh, convert some more, convert a few of these. Uh, Tornado squadrons to uh, Typhoon squadrons for the player, and then I'm also going to probably up the squadron sizes just a little bit. And then I am going to do a little bit of research this week into hopefully finding a couple more, some uh, targets over here in the UK for the French to attack when uh, things kind of go hot. So plan for the the 
like I think my plan is is that the scenario will start out mainly as like a naval scenario, and then with a uh, kind of the decoy uh, and you know fake air attacks, and then when things go hot, then it'll kind of turn mainly into an air and naval scenario. So the player, uh, like I said, the player's not really going to know when uh, the attack's coming in, so you'll have to really manage your air assets of keeping enough on reserve for when things do go hot, but not knowing when that's going to be. All right. Okay, so with those groups done, commercial tanker, commercial tanker, what I think I want to do is take a number of these just vessels and just kind of stick them, copy them off to the side here. Commercial row, row, row on, row off, row on, row off. Medium range tanker. Commercial container vessel. I think I already had that one. I think I already had those. Commercial tanker, long range. What I'm doing is I'm kind of gathering all the units I've already kind of used here, and I'm going to set them off to the side so it makes it a little easier to uh, make imports out of them. Ouch, Coiler, those are some really kind of crappy download speeds right there. Coiler 12 is just showing off his uh, really awful internet connection at the moment. Um, small feeder, let's copy this. Don't think I have an LNG in over here yet. Okay, so I know there's a couple, I know there's more types of vessels I had in here that I'm missing. Small feeder, small feeder, commercial LNG, commercial LNG, general purpose tanker I think I already have copied. Small feeder, feeder max I think I have, LNG. I don't think I have the small feeder. Tanker, commercial tanker. I think I already have this one, but yep, commercial tanker, general purpose, and should probably copy over one of these uh, SL sevens. Right. Um, 
I should have feeder and feeder max over here, right? Feeder max, small feeder, small feeder, and feeder. All right, and let's just double check. I didn't put anything unique in this group. I think that's mainly LNG tankers. Yep, awesome. Um, I think I already saved it, but I'm gonna just save it again. Thanks Java for reminding me. And actually just to kind of uh, be on the safe side here, I'm actually gonna do a save as and save it as a new version. One thing I really, really wish Command had is I really wish Command had an, like a rewind button that just didn't simply, you know, you can always go up here to, you know, uh, scenario and reset the time, but that doesn't reset events or units that were recreated through events. So I really wish that it was just like a rewind button that was only available in editor mode. They could just hit rewind in case, uh, you know, you accidentally hit start resume and, you know, triggered a bunch of a triggered a bunch of stuff and then, you know, basically unable to undo it without restarting over from your last save. Or, del or knowing exactly what changed. Um, all right, so back to this. All right, so let's do a couple kind of a I'm gonna litter the North Sea over here with uh, different various import groups. So we got, there's a tanker group. Let's do kind of a couple just row on row off ships and container vessels. And we'll have just a group of two row rows. Kind of a group of three row on row off ships. A couple of small feeders. Now the reason I'm going with about kind of four, you know, two to four ships per group here is that uh, I'm assuming that these, uh, that who's ever in charge of these naval forces would want to get the most out of, uh, you know, each of their escort groups. So you're not going to assign, you know, one merchant with two escorts. You're going to try and get the, what you think you can get away with. So then I'm going to have another group kind of, uh, say two of the SL7s. Another group of four SL7s. Um, let's do LNG, LNG group and LNG with a couple of large commercial tankers. I think when I thought I was copying LNG, I think I copied the, yeah, I copied a medium tinker, not an LNG. General purpose. <sighs> oh, so some other bit of news. I've been really kind of bragging this up the last couple of days, but um, the first scenario I 
the first scenario I designed here on the live stream, La Chasse de Sous Marine. I've been really working on uh, on beta 2 for it now that I've uh, finally, I think for the moment, finished up the Iran strike scenario. A um, little bit of a kind of about a month spent working on that. But I finished up all of the weather scripts for this um, for Seuss Marine, which means hunting underwater. And uh, so I think these scripts are something I'm going to actually be putting into uh, into Calm Before the Storm. Essentially what it is is it's a uh, um, not just randomized weather, but actually like a randomized weather path. For instance, this path here has good weather throughout the entire scenario. I have another weather path that is bad weather throughout the entire scenario. And then I have weather that um, there's a lot of events um, that starts off that starts off good, but then it slowly turns to bad weather. And then I have the opposite of this of weather that starts off bad and then turns to good. And what I've done is I'm actually going to be tying this weather these weather scripts into the AI missions for Seuss Marine. So like for instance, when the weather's bad, you won't have any ASW air patrols. But when the weather is good, you will have them. So, and I think it's it's something I'm actually going to be putting into Calm Before the Storm, or at least a version of these scripts. Um, it actually it's actually quite a bit of work. I mean, this uh, Seuss Marine is actually only three days long, and I think I've got you know basically three days worth of script with a t with a, basically an event that is, that basically ticks every three hours. So if you take seven hours, you know, seven days potentially. You know, divide that by uh, three-hour tick events. That's you know times four different paths. I mean, that's that's a lot of events that I would have to uh, set up. But I think uh, I think it'll be worth it when that time comes. But that's still kind of a ways away before I implement something like that into this. All right. So back to this. And actually, I think I've been going for about an hour here, so I'm going to take a, a quick break here. And when I come back, I will basically get back to uh, continue work on these imports. And I'm back. Need to go refill the drink, go throw on a sweatshirt, because it's actually really kind of cold here today. All right, so back to imports. Probably going to go for probably about another 20 or 30 minutes and then uh, kind of call it for the day and pick this up again uh, hopefully next week. All right, so let's do kind of an L and G kind of group. Um, commercial tankers. Say we take a container vessel, container vessel, say a couple of container vessels, and throw in a Purpose tankers. Now I'm not actually sure if this is the greatest way to do this. I might actually change this up so these are spawned by scripts, but for the time being, commercial tanker medium range over there. to a group of these large long range tankers. Now I'm actually missing a long range two. Put that over there. What's the draft on that? Draft is 16 meters. Ah, it should fit through the straights. If only barely. Um, all right. 
over there. Um, long range tanker, long range tanker. Left feeder. All right. Um, couple of general purpose tankers there. All right. I think that's close enough for what I'm going to need this for. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Eh, let's do one more group just to make it even 16. Um, what are these? These are SL7s. Uh, let's do a do a feeder max. All right, there we go. So that should be 16, about 16 different types of uh, 16 different various groups here. Um, all right, gonna save. And honestly, that's about all I was planning on doing today. I'm a little surprised at how quickly I finished. Although there are a couple of small little housekeeping things I uh, I could take care of. So in the last time I did this, I so over here we had where is so RF RAF flying dales over here. I basically made in ages ashore. Well, as it turns out, that it, um, RAF Flyingdales is actually in the DB or, or is actually already in the, the radar there, is actually already in the, uh, DB. Oh. Land unit. Oh, where is it? Oh, I know. I think I bookmarked it. There we go. Radar AN FPS 126, ballistic missile, ballistic missile early warning system 3, United States Air Force, Flying Dales, England. So I am actually going to replace this RAF Flying Dales with the correct one. And it's really probably not going to be a huge deal in this scenario. Although for a future scenario, I am planning on giving the uh, the EU over here some uh, cruise missiles in the form of DF-21s and maybe some shipwrecks, which may or may not be nuclear tipped. Hint, hint. Nudge, nudge. So for that, in that case, these uh, these ballistic missile early warning radars may actually come in useful. And the reason I'm using shipwrecks and DF-21s is because, well, 
nobody else really has anything similar to them. So I think they'll make a good stand-in for a hypothetical uh, a hypothetical French or German ballistic missile. So let's save this. See places as Aria Flyingdales. And you would think by now I would have learned to keep the XML or KML2 installation uh, transfer program on my desktop, but you would think wrong given how much I actually use it. But there we go. Get that over to a KMZ file, RAF Flyingdales. The applications. All right, Flyingdales. Save. And don't need that. All right. So, as we before, we want DBID of 1, and then the DBID for the Flying Dales facility is 1027, and that should all I have to change there. Close out that. Minimize, bring command back up. Load import. RAF Flyingdales. There we go. So, radar. There we go. Got a 1600 nautical, or, yeah, 16. I'm sorry, 2800 nautical mile max range. I was looking at the area, not the max range, is 2800 nautical miles. Late 1980s tech, ABM space search. So maybe I should have kept that as an Aegis, but you know what? For the moment, I think this will work just fine. Although it's probably been upgraded since this 1993 uh, date. Maybe I should have used the 2002 Thule Alaska. Although it does, it is a newer system than that, so yeah, it'll probably work out fine. I'm just kind of curious, Aegis, Ashore. Yeah, the Aegis Ashore ABM mods max range is 175 nautical miles, so it's mainly just a fire control radar rather than a early warning detection radar. And... Pull the chats back up. All right. I'm going to save this. All right. Well, I think I was going to go on for about another 10 minutes, but I think uh, since I'm kind of at a good stopping point, I think I'm going to just kind of call it here for today and pick back up on this next week where I'll hopefully uh, have all this kind of cleaned up and then I will hopefully get started on next week, get started on a mission setup. So we will should be out of the setup phase now and, and to start getting even more kind of, kind of tedious stuff 
which is mission setup, which is where I usually kind of start burning out on these scenarios. So anyways, thanks everybody for joining me today. Remember to follow me on Twitch, on Twitter, at Kushan Gaming, and on YouTube. And everybody have a good week.